Harvard neuroscientists scanned the brains of people holding grudges for over five years. What they found was disturbing. Their prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain responsible for decision-making and intelligence, had physically shrunk. But here's what's shocking. Within 90 days of practicing forgiveness, that same brain tissue began regenerating. Letting go isn't just emotional healing. It's cognitive restoration. And if you're someone who struggles to let things go, that's not weakness. It's a sign your brain processes experiences more deeply. But it's time to upgrade that system. Section 1. The Intelligence Tax of Resentment But first, let's talk about what holding on is actually doing to your brain. Every time you replay an old wound, every time you rehearse that conversation you should have had, or relive that betrayal, your brain releases cortisol. Research from the University of Wisconsin found that people with chronic resentment have 40% higher baseline cortisol levels than those who practice forgiveness. And cortisol is neurotoxic. It literally damages your hippocampus, the brain's memory center. It's like running your brain's engine in the red zone, 24-7. Eventually, something breaks. But the damage goes deeper. Neuroscientists discovered that emotional baggage occupies 30 to 40% of your working memory capacity. Think of working memory as your brain's RAM, the mental space you need for problem solving, learning, and adapting to new situations. When that bandwidth is hijacked by old grudges, you can't think clearly. Ever notice you make worse decisions when you're still angry about something from last week? That's not coincidence. That's neuroscience. And there's more. A Stanford study found that resentful people are 60% less accurate at reading social cues. Your brain gets stuck in threat detection mode. When you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. You can't spot opportunities when you're scanning for dangers. Now, if you ruminate on past wrongs, you're not overthinking. You're trying to protect yourself. Your brain thinks if it replays the scenario enough times, it can prevent future pain. That's intelligence at work. But it's outdated intelligence. Section 2. The Forgiveness Rewiring Process So what happens when you actually let go? Functional MRI studies from Yale show that forgiveness practices light up your prefrontal cortex, the same region responsible for complex reasoning and emotional regulation. And after just eight weeks of consistent practice, researchers measured an actual increase in gray matter density in this area. Letting go isn't passive. It's active brain construction. Your brain has what neuroscientists call a default mode network. Think of it as your mind's screensaver. What runs when you're not actively focused on a task? When you're driving, showering, or drifting off to sleep? In resentful brains, that screensaver is stuck replaying past betrayals. The same scenes, over and over. But forgiveness breaks that loop. Instead of ruminating on the past, your default mode network starts planning for the future. Cambridge researchers found that people who practiced forgiveness showed 45% more activity in brain regions associated with creativity and future-oriented thinking. And when you release emotional baggage, your working memory capacity returns. A Princeton study showed that people who practiced forgiveness scored 23% higher on cognitive flexibility tests within just six weeks. Suddenly, you can see solutions you couldn't before. Not because you got smarter, but because you removed the interference. Here's the part that surprised researchers. Forgiveness actually enhances your theory of mind. Your ability to read other people's intentions. Studies found that people who let go of resentment became better at predicting behavior and understanding social dynamics. This isn't about becoming naive. It's about becoming strategically smarter. 
You can't accurately assess people when you're viewing everyone through the lens of past betrayal. Marcus Aurelius wrote, The best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Neuroscience now proves this makes you cognitively superior. Letting go doesn't mean you were wrong to be hurt. It means you're choosing intelligence over injury. But here's what I need you to understand. And this is critical. I am not asking you to forgive because the people who hurt you deserve it. The spouse who betrayed your trust. The business partner who defrauded you. The people who committed acts of violence or abuse against you. Let's be honest. They may never deserve your forgiveness. They may deserve consequences. They may deserve to be forgotten. But forgiveness? Forgiveness is for you. When you refuse to forgive, you are drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You are letting the person who hurt you in the past continue to damage your brain in the present. Don't do it for them. Do it because you refuse to let their crime live rent-free in your hippocampus for one more day. This is a selfish act of survival. And that is okay. So let's talk about how to actually do this. Not for them, but for your own cognitive freedom. Section 3. The Practical Decluttering Protocol Three Steps Backed by Neuroscience First, the externalization technique. Write it down. All of it. Uncensored. Every resentment. Every wound. Every person who wronged you. Research shows that expressive writing for just 15 minutes a day for four days reduces rumination by 40%. Why does this work? Because it transfers storage from your working memory, which is limited, to external memory. Paper. Then destroy it. Burn it. Shred it. Delete it. That ritual closure signals to your brain that the chapter is complete. You're not suppressing the emotion. You're completing the processing loop. Second, the temporal distance reframe. Ask yourself, will this matter in five years? If the answer is no, you're borrowing cognitive resources from your future self to fuel a fire that will burn out anyway. And if the answer is yes, ask a follow-up. Will holding on to it help or hurt my intelligence five years from now? Harvard research shows that temporal distancing viewing situations from a future perspective increases emotional regulation by 35%. Future you needs present you to clear the path. Third, the gratitude neuroplasticity hack. For every resentment you're carrying, identify one lesson or one way it forced you to grow. This isn't toxic positivity. It's strategic reframing. Stanford neuroscientists found that gratitude practices activate the same prefrontal cortex regions as forgiveness. You're creating a new neural pathway. Your brain starts associating past pain with present wisdom. You're not grateful it happened. You're grateful for who you became despite it. Now, you might be thinking, when is the right time to start this? And here's the mechanism most people miss. Your biological reset. Every night while you sleep, your brain washes away toxic buildup through what neuroscientists call the glymphatic system. Every morning is a neurological clean slate. You don't need to wait for a special occasion. Your brain gives you a reset button every 24 hours. Holding on to yesterday's resentment is like running today's thinking on yesterday's corrupted files. Use the reset. Every single morning, your brain evolved to protect you by remembering threats. That's why letting go feels dangerous. It feels like disarming yourself. But here's what neuroscience reveals. Holding on doesn't protect you. It diminishes you. Every grudge you carry is cognitive weight you can't use for solving today's problems. Every old wound you rehearse is mental bandwidth you can't deploy for learning, creating, or connecting. The smartest people aren't those who never get hurt. 
They're the ones who refuse to let old wounds occupy valuable mental real estate. Forgiveness isn't weakness. It's the most aggressive form of self-optimization.